Hey guys, we're back for another day in the arena here with Standard. Um, yeah, no changes to the deck since the other day. Been really happy with it. Currently uh, in like the top 1200 Mythic. So yeah, we're gonna see if we can get some more wins. Um, if you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by my channel. And if you like my content, please consider subscribing. And if you wanna share it with a friend, that would be great who might enjoy it as well. Um, or leave a comment or drop a like if you um, enjoy it. So. And then for my returning viewers, thank you guys so much again for sharing your support. You guys really do mean the world to me, and this wouldn't be possible without you. So, yeah, there should be a deck list in the description. I'll have it both on untapped.gg as well as uh, Moxfield. But uh, let's jump into some games. If you do really like my content and you want to, you know, leave a tip, thank me, um, there is a way to do it. So if you go to the little more icon, um, you can actually donate via super thanks. So if you wanna leave a tip, um, I greatly appreciate it, you don't have to, but if you wanna show your support and your thanks, there's another way to do that. And you can do that right in the, um, through YouTube here. So, all right, let's get into some games. I'm still kind of trying out the uh, Frantic Scapegoat, but I'm really liking it so far. And I think it's nice with the interaction. Uh, looks like we're up against Mono Red here. I've definitely, I've run into this player before. I believe he's Mono Red, so this hand looks good. Um, but yeah, I like the interaction between Frantic Scapegoat and then helping get like the Code Breaker through. Um, giving it some more evasion feels really good. Okay, looks like playing a different deck here, maybe Mono White or possibly uh, Boros Convoke here. Um, there's a couple players I run into the, on the ladder fairly often, so it's always kind of fun to see if I can guess what they're playing. All right, so we've got a couple options here. We could try to uh, just like set up Invasion here on the Warden, but I think the, um, the counter is pretty valuable, so I do like maybe going for the uh, the code breaker here, uh, being able to push some damage, and then next turn we can, um, if we can't invasion, we could lightning strike if we have to on the warden. So I think just yeah, getting this, this damage in now feels pretty good. Okay, looks like we are up against Convoke. And I think here, we just want to invasion maybe one of the other um, creatures here just to be able to get the dragon in play is super powerful. We could also go like Kumano plus Swift Spear to try to push some damage and that would be great too. Um, but yeah, I think just being able to get Dragon going is pretty pretty important. There's definitely a lot of ways we could play this turn. We could try to like Lightning Strike the Warden, slow it down a bit. Okay, looks like they've got reinforcements possibly into Knight Errant here. Yeah, there's the Knight Errant. Okay, and they've got the Recruiter set up, so we've got to kind of get things moving here. All right, so they've got three mana. If they have another mana, they could play like Inspector here plus Recruiter push for a lot. Um, let's see, they'd be pushing for... Three, five, if we let everything live here. Seven, nine, eleven, fourteen, nineteen. So we could actually just let them like full send and still live through it. Um, not that we necessarily need to do that exactly. 
I kind of like... Maybe, um... Swift Spear plus Kumano, and then we could put two damage on the Knight Errant and see if they want to block and trade. That's one option. We could also use the Lightning Strike. Yeah, I think I'm actually just going to go for the the lightning strike play here. This way we've got them dead in the air right here with our thunder maw. And they don't have enough to push for lethal. Yeah, that's going to do it. All right, yeah, this hand looks great. We've got uh, plays on one, two, and three. Happy to keep. And I do feel pretty good about getting like one copy of Squee back in the deck just to give us a little bit of an inevitability. It's also kind of nice against like the decks that mill. That way we can, you know, potentially draw into a threat. Okay, here I think, yeah, this is probably blue-white control, I'm guessing, with the demolition field. So we probably, I think we just want to go, like, Codebreaker here. They certainly could have the, um, you know, eventual lockdown, but they need another two more white. So I'm happy to try to run it out see what we can do. Okay, so now they're they're probably you know maybe setting up for um, Sunfall again. They're still missing the other white source. They could have it in hand and just be you know kind of playing KG there with the uh, Celestis, but I think it is worth getting the Squee going here, even potentially if it does run into Sunfall. Um, I think there's enough upside just to kind of get it going. Let's see. Let's lead another mountain out here. Yeah, I think they're going to have to get rid of a demolition field to find that second white source, it looks like. Actually, I guess in hindsight, knowing that they might make that play, it might have been better to play the other foundry. That way we'd have an active foundry. So, yeah, it probably would have been better to play the foundry last turn instead of the mountain. I think it might be fairly minor in that... They won't be able to capitalize it on it too much, but it probably would have been a little better to play that second foundry last turn. Okay, Esper maybe? All right, getting close, but not quite there yet. And I think they probably are gearing up for Sunfall here. But if they've got Sunfall, at least like our Kumano survives, they might also potentially have Lockdown. But again, I don't want to play around it too much. I just want to kind of get things going.
And then I think let's just main phase lightning strike here to get the extra buff for damage. And if they have like Path of Peril or something like that, we can then just, yeah, there we go. So now we can use Squee. They do have the counter potential here, but again, I think it's worth going for, for the extra counter here. And that way we get to keep our Foundry and if they have like removal on hand, so I think it's worth going for. We are playing into a counter here, but I think it's, it's still the move. We don't have adversary in the deck, so we can get we can get rid of the lightning strike and it shouldn't matter here. Yeah. Opening hand looks good. Um, we don't have a second creature in hand for the Kumano, but I think it's still worth running. Still very happy with the three land opener. Even just Kumano by itself is just still feels really good. And very happy to get a chance to use Invasion of Tarkir to shut down their veteran. Okay, looks like another Boros Convoke deck. Or maybe Boros Humans, perhaps. So let's just run out another Invasion. And then kind of get started on cleaning up one of these here. festivities could be nice especially if they are Boris Convoke it feels like Boris Humans though especially with uh, Cavern of Souls but it's possible it's still Boris Convoke so I think this way we can just um, how do we want to do this let's think I guess we could like double send and then play another Sokens in. But I think the play here is to like end of turn on their turn lightning strike and to get this this um, last couple counters off. I think that they probably have um, reinforcements in hand and we're okay to trade with that and uh, get that going. But I think let's hold the lightning strike and just attack with the Kumano here. And I think I'm going to actually go with the 5, just because it's functionally the same with our Lightning Strike. Just start working on it. Now if they just double block, we can use Play With Fire. Um, if they triple block, we're happy with that. Or if they just single block, we can just end the festivities. Either way, we're happy. So I think we want to end the festivities here just to like make sure they don't get Knight Errant going. And then end of turn lightning strike the uh, invasion.
and squeeze a great great draw here just kind of get that going start working on this other invasion okay so I think we just uh, maybe send with these two I guess they could have another um, Hmm. They could have like another set of um, soldiers here, reinforcements. So maybe just go face here. And then I think we just do the damage directly to the Tark here, because if they block here with this, we can still trample over for the extra three. So we're leaving them with a Phantom, but I think that's okay. Yeah, they had the reinforcements there, but it didn't matter. All right, thanks guys for watching another clean 3-0. So let's take a look at the stats. All right, so we are currently 76% win rate, um, 26 wins and eight losses with this deck. 83% win rate on the play and 69% win rate on the draw. So yeah, the matches are looking really good here for Mono Red, seven and two, seven and one against Boros Convoke, three and zero against Mono White, two and one against um, Azorius uh, Control, two and one against Demir, two and zero against Mono Black, um, O2 against Esper. So that has been um, one trouble match here, and then. I'm not sure this was able to totally fill what deck this was. 0-1 um, against Rakdos, 1-0 against Golgari, and 1-0 against Gruul, uh, Picnic Ruiner. So, yeah, really happy with the deck. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys here for the next one. You guys are awesome, and thank you so much again for being here.